All right, the Padres, they dropped this one to the Phillies, a blowout. I mean, it was a 9-3 game in the eighth inning. Tatis was pulled before this game ended. You know, once Tatis gets pulled or a big-name player gets pulled and it's not an injury, that's Mike Schilt saying, yeah, we're not going to go win this game, so why should fans really have that faith that they're going to go win this game either? Um, I think the story coming out of tonight is Joe Musgrove continuing to struggle. He's had a couple of good outings, bounce back outings, like good to see something like that from Joe. But then tonight, it, it just, the fastball is what, 92? It's disappointing to see. You know, it's it's down a little bit. It's not like he was someone that threw 98, but it's down. And then when you leave it over the middle of the plate and you've got this Phillies lineup, it's kind of like the Dodgers lineup. Like, it's a good lineup. It's one of the best lineups that Musgrove is going to face. Any Padres pitcher, for that matter, is going to face. And, you know, Bryce Harper hitting that home run and obviously the, the pop of the bat, you can hear. But it wasn't just him, obviously. I mean, Kyle Schwarber, right off the bat, he homers. Um, JT Romuto homers in this game. Brennan Marsh homers. Nick Castellanos homers. Castellanos is hitting 180 on the season. Schwarber's hitting 198. But as I was listening to this game on the radio at the beginning when Schwarber was up to bat, and yeah, like Jesse and Tony were talking about how Schwarber, he's just one of those oddities, right? Hits a bunch of home runs, but the average just isn't there. And that's not something that you really want for the most part out of hitters. But when you're hitting 40 plus home runs, I believe like Schwarber did last year, you're going to take it. And so, you know, with Musgrove, I'm just seeing the fastball, like the, just the velocity in general is concerning, leaving the breaking ball over the middle of the plate. And I mean, you, you saw the frustration. And I guess that's a positive kind of. Um, I mean, I'm kind of searching for positives here with Joe right now, because as much as it pains me to say it, like Joe obviously hasn't been good this year. And you go look at the baseball savant numbers compared to last year, a bunch of red in the baseball savant for 2023. But then you look at 2024 and there is no red. Literally, there is no red on his baseball savant page. He's not getting getting as many strikeouts. Um, obviously, the pitching run value, all that stuff is not where it was. Uh, the batting average compared to last year, 73rd percentile X batting average last year. And this year, it's like almost as bad as it can be. It's at the fifth percentile. Same thing with XERA, fifth percentile. Um, it's, it's concerning for sure. And I like that Joe cares so much and like what he showed today on the mound, you know, when things were not going right, like he was pissed off and you could see it. I like that, that fire in that player. He's not just like, Oh, well, whatever. Like he cares. He's pissed off at himself for what's happening here. I, I hope it's not an injury. You know, we're seeing all these injuries pop up around major league baseball and pitching. You hope it's not that because coming off of last year, right, with that shoulder and just the fact that we have to rely on Joe. Like, this guy, he's going to be huge for us if we want to go where we want to go. I mean, look back at 2022 and what he did in the postseason and some of those outings that he had. They don't go where they were in 2022 without Joe Musgrove, you know? And so, we sure, we can have Michael King and we can have Dylan Cease pitch really well, and we'll see what happens when Darvish comes back after the neck here. And it is April. Like, there's still a lot of season for Joe to turn this around. But just the early signs here aren't great. And if his fastball is going to be 92, well, then he's going to have to locate better. And I think if that's what's going to happen with the velocity this year and there's no injury, I believe that he will adapt and he will be able to turn it around. But, yeah, it's I'm sure he's more frustrated than any of us. I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, because he, again, he wants, like, I think we all know, he wants to win for this city so bad. So, like, like the care thing, I don't, I don't think really fans are bringing it up, by the way. So, maybe I shouldn't even hit on that because we all know he cares. But it's just really the frustration about it. You know, Darvish on the IL, Musgrove, the struggles. Dylan Cease is pitching fabulous. You know, he's pitching this series, thankfully. And thankfully, the Padres don't have to run into Zach Wheeler, although they ran into, Aaron Nola tonight. Um, it's just these two guys, right? We were re relying on them to start the year, and we still are going to be relying on these two guys. No doubt about that. 
And like, you can't win in the postseason. And obviously, the postseason is a long way away. They have to get there. And it's again, it's April 26. So I'm probably, I need to pump the brakes, obviously. But at the same time, when you think about the state of the rotation and Darvish and Musgrove, question marks there right now, they just are. Um, you look at Cease and King, okay, but you don't win you don't win postseason series with two starting pitchers for the most part, usually. Maybe the short series, but those long series, you've got to have more than two starters. And so like Musgrove, Darvish, they've got to step up. And sometimes the stepping up is on the mound, like executing better, and sometimes it's gotta be healthy, you know. Um, offensively tonight, I mean, I, I like that Graham Pauly had that homer off of Nola. But it was still late, you know. It felt like the game was over at that point anyway. But like Grant Pauly, people know my thoughts on this. Manny's back at third. That was good to see him back in the lineup and back at third. He looked good there. Like he can he can walk, uh, get up from bed, walk outside, and go be one of the best third basemen in baseball. Like that's just how freakish, freakishly talented this guy is. And we know that. But with Graham. Limited playing time, limited opportunities at the big league level to like get at bats, not coming as a pitch hitter, but to start games. And I know that Mike Schilt values what Tyler Wade can bring to this Padres team, but I'm going to keep tooting that Graham Pauly horn. I want to see what this guy can do for this Padres team. Give him the consistent playing time, the at bats, because Tyler Wade's not going to be your DH. And if Manny's going to be at third the rest of the year, wouldn't you want Graham Pauly? at least see if Grand Pauly can be that DH type as a left-handed bat, right? Because having Tyler Wade be there or having Eggy Rosario be there, is that as appealing as a Grand Pauly hitting well? I'm not so sure. So that was like the, the positive that I came out tonight with, with this offense. Um, again, Tatis was pulled early. Bogarts, uh, I believe Kim was as well, because... Uh, bogey was moved from second to short. So just a, a disappointing night, you know, coming off of a really disappointing ending to the series at Coors Field. And so now the Padres, they're a game under 500, 14 and 15. And now they got to win both of these games coming up against the Phillies here to win this series. Um, and, and really at this point, like just what it feels like is definitely win tomorrow with Dylan Cease on the mound. But the Padres, I believe they're facing Suarez, who's been pitching really well. So it's not going to be an easy matchup. But really, it's like avoid the sweep right now. I mean, I have confidence in Michael King, but the Phillies have Taiwan Walker on the other side coming back. And I don't really know what to expect out of him coming back. Uh, I believe he was on the IL. But these last couple games, it, it, it sucked to watch. Um, Jackson Merrill, he wasn't in the lineup tonight. and which I was surprised by because his post-game quotes, I believe, yes, maybe it was pre-game or post, I think it was post-game yesterday with Kevin Acey, was it seemed like he was confident that, yeah, he's going to be in the game. He's going to be in the lineup tonight, and he wasn't. And so I don't think that's a Merrill decision. And, you know, Schilt was saying that Merrill was irritated that he wasn't in the lineup. So that's really the Padres holding Merrill back, so we'll see if he's in there tomorrow because you'd, you'd obviously love to have Jackson Merrill be in this lineup. Having Merrill and Pauly almost every day. I know Pauly, you're not going to have him every day because of matchups, but still, like, if you want to see if this guy can play every day for you, you got to allow him to face left handed hitters or left handed pitchers, not just right handed, you know? So those are just some thoughts that I have here. Post game reaction Padres drop game one to the Phillies. Give your thoughts in the comments. And by the way, I want to thank everyone for the support um, after that Eric Hosmer conversation dropped this morning. Hopefully everyone enjoyed that. If you have not checked it out, feel free to check it out on podcast platforms on this YouTube channel. Um, I appreciated Haas's accountability. I, I think that I asked him the, the tough, right questions. So hopefully you enjoyed that.